track of my um, uh, audio settings more. I want to make sure that kind of thing doesn't happen again. So I tend to check it beforehand these days. Just to make absolutely certain. Yeah, I still manage to screw it up. It's what they call the Let's Player's Curse, I suppose. Then again, when people talk about the Let's Player's Curse, they talk about how you, you're really great at a game, and then you start recording it, and you, you look like the, the biggest noob in, in the universe. I don't really have that problem, because I'm crap at games anyway. So, you know, I'm consistent. Ah, consistency! I was talking about that earlier. I am consistent in my consistency. I consistently talk about consistent consistency. It is the truth. And my wardrobe? My washing machine is, um, he's going at the moment, I'm doing some washing. Yeah, my wardrobe machine. Wait, were they explosives? Was that not thingy Bob? Where are you going, Kiwi? Get that thing on the, the wall. Get the thing on the wall, get the thing on the desk. There was a giant entry type thing there. Ooh. Exploding in the desk. Why am I using science? Uh, because reasons. Reasons are good. Reasons are always good. You can't argue with reasons. Because reasons are reasons. Good. Yes. Reasons are the best reasons in the world. Exploding people worlds. And just to make absolutely certain, I shot him in the way. Where'd you come from? Dude! Where'd that dude come from? I don't know about it. It was his face. Okay, it wasn't actually his face. It was his, um, his helmet. I still exploded it. For... Why are you going walking around there again, Kiwi? There's nobody there. You already know there's nobody there. Now get the thing on the, the um, table. Dude, go get it. What? Why am I leaving? Finally! What's up to... Why'd that take so long? Our coastal base has been attacked by... Unknown assailants. We suspect the Americans think that's have arrived and are attempting face? to sabotage our operations. Um, Communications have been disrupted across the island, and we've sustained heavy losses. Many of our soldiers Same have voice as simply disappeared. All remaining Can't personnel his name. are proceeding to the ancient monastery to ensure control of the weather phenomenon. We expect to meet heavy resistance en route. Yeah, I think that was the Request guy who did the voice of Ra, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head anymore. Robin Atkin Downs. I think that was either him or um, Cam Clark, who's probably best known for doing the voice of Liquid Snake. And uh, he's also in every game ever made, ever. A bit like Nolan North, although Cam Clark doesn't tend to have um, starring roles that often. He tends to be more strong supporting. I mean, there's a thing, I was uh, talking to Jim Boone about this, of Volition. Um, Cam Clark is in just about every... Not Cam Clark. Uh, no one knows, he's just about every game ever made, ever, and it's it's like one of those things where you see his name, and you're like, oh god, not again. But he's also really good. He does lots of different voices. I mean, even, even when he sounds exactly the same, he still sounds different, because... He's just a really good actor. Really good voice actor. Um, he a adds a lot of personality to it. He can even do something that's very difficult to do. He can make a character so plain that he stops being bland and starts becoming interesting, like a blank canvas, so to speak. Which is what I felt he did with Desmond in Assassin's Creed. Desmond wasn't dull, he was just... He, there was enough there for you to apply your own meanings behind everything he did. You were only given tiny little bits of him as a person, so you filled in the gap to yourself. Which is why some people like him and some people don't. Some people filled in gaps and just found out that he was a really uninteresting, boring dipshit. It was a stylistic choice. I found him a lot more interesting for it. I could relate to him a lot more because I didn't feel forced into any particular um, interpretation of what was going on around him and how he was interacting with it. I was able to put myself into his shoes more and wonder how I'd handle something like that. 
that's um, that's what makes Half Life such a great series. Because Desmond, uh, Desmond, Gordon is defined by his actions and the way other people interact with him, rather than what he actually says. Because he doesn't say anything, which makes him a blank canvas. Which for a lot of people makes him what's the point in having a character at all. He's he's uninteresting. He's, it, it, for them, it creates a disconnect between who he is and um, what's going on around him. They're like, how do we know he did all this because he never said anything? How do we know he's like this? It's like, well, we know he's like this because it's the way people interact with him. Are these his motivations, though? That's never made clear. That's left to your interpretation. That's left for you to decide, why did you do it? Did you do it because you wanted to? Did you do it because you felt pressured into it? Maybe Gordon, in your eyes, was staying silent just because he didn't have the patience to to speak to all these fucking morons around him. I'm smiling a lot today, aren't I? Uh -huh. Oh, well, never mind. It happens sometimes. So, yeah. What do you think? Why did Gordon do everything he did? Maybe he's working for the G-Man all along. Maybe he's a willing participant in all this. Do you ever think of that? That's what makes Half-Life such a great series, is they, how little they explain. They give you the setting, they give you the events, and they let you interpret them for yourself. What more games could do with uh, taking a lesson from that? Of course, it doesn't work every time. It depends on how well you put it together. That's a lot of things. But yeah, I got a bit turned around there. I wasn't quite sure where I was going. I thought that had taken me somewhere new. And then realised they had just taken me back down to where I already was. Also, I love that. The, the fact that it's a blatant ladder, but it has the wires. And it's like, yeah, great. Stick to those two textures together. I think that was a, a bit of a nod to the way um, ladders in. I think it was Tomb Raider 2. Ladders were huge. Ridiculously enormous. But that was limitations of the, the graphical um, engines at the time. I mean... Look how much they've progressed. You know, there's a thing with the new console generation coming up. People seem to be seem to think that this is going to be this massive, enormous thing, and it's not. The difference, <coughs> the difference between the, um, the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, and the Xbox and the Xbox 360, wasn't as pronounced as what people make it out to be. The difference this time around is going to be even less pronounced. They seem to think that because there are now the 8 gigabytes of RAM and everything that the consoles now are going to be stupidly powerful and they're not. They're really not. They're already behind what high-end PC gaming is. The reason we won't see the as big a jump on the PC as a lot of people want is because, frankly, consoles hold them back. Not intentionally. Not in the sense the of limiting what the PC 6, can do, which is but mm. lucky, One good luck kind. Worn down, as if it was rubbed repeatedly. <coughs> but um, Maybe this was a consoles drive the industry. It's unfortunate, but it's true because they're much more accessible. They're much easier to code for because it's a closed platform, which allows you to keep your focus. Yeah, there we go. You see, so unfortunately. This is one of the things that really gets on my nerves. Now, personally, I'm going to preface this by saying you don't have to believe me, but it's up to you. Graphics don't matter that much to me. I'm far more interested in the game as a whole. I mean, Papers, Please is a game that looks like it would run on a calculator. Lars, totally right. Something seriously fucked up is going on here. The natural phenomenon that causes the weather to go apeshit. Military research base, some kind of sun queen, yeah. and the crazy cult. If I didn't know better, I'd say this is a big put on. Those TV cameras hidden in the trees. You know, I, I got it man, scaring the shit out of me. I, I keep cracking jokes to cover it up. Reyes looks ready to kick my ass. I think I need to do something useful before I completely go. lose it. I wish I could be more like Lara. She just. <laughs> She blows me away. Not only is she brilliant, but she's also an amazing ass kicker. Now, if she didn't notice me before, she sure as hell won't now. But maybe I can still do something to get her attention. Yeah, 
graphics don't really mean that much to me. This is what people don't seem to understand. When I talk about the games being held back, um, in the sense of what they can do, I don't mean the way they look. There's a lot more to a game than just the way they look. This is why I was, uh, I'm so much more interested in the RAM upgrade. This is why the industry as a whole has been so much more interested in RAM upgrades. Because the vid cards in the new consoles aren't that much different from the ones in the previous consoles. They'll be more refined, they'll be more efficient, but nothing major. But the RAM on the other hand, they allow you to do more things. Subtle things that, for some reason, console gamers don't seem to notice. Things like Tress FX. Your average console gamer won't pay much, in my experience, your average console gamer will not pay any attention to the way the hair works. They don't care. They look at the overall interpretation, they look at the overall in, uh, uh, presentation, sorry. They look at how shiny it is and, you know, what's going on and colour and stuff like that. Um, and they think, wow, that looks great. I look at it and think, eh. I look at little things like the way the hair moves, like the interactions, like put it, things like if you go near a wall you put your hand on it, stuff like that, what I notice and what PC gamers as a whole tend to notice, we look at the tiny details, the infinitesimal little things and they are affected by RAM. To do the calculations for all the interactions between the hair, that's what you need RAM for. To give you a quick understanding of the three basic components of playing a game from a technology standpoint, your graphics card is how pretty something looks, it's how many colours it can do, it's how many polygons it can handle. The more polygons, the, the less jagged edges you'll have, the, the higher the, the quality of the image, and the more colours you have, the more colourful it will look, the closer it will be to looking realistic. Your CPU is how quickly it can process information. Your central processing unit. The, the higher, your, the faster your CPU, the quicker it can calculate. The quicker it can process. The more cores it has, the more things it can do concurrently. The more processes it can process concurrently. Your RAM is the number of things it can do at a time. So with 512 megabytes of RAM. Let's, for sake of argument, say that that limits you to 512 things it could do simultaneously. It's like it could, so you tend to, you'd end up getting your hair being one process. Whereas if you have eight gigabytes of RAM, for sake of argument, let's say that's 8,000 things it can do. There you go. You could then turn the um, the hair into a thousand individual things and have them all managed individually. It makes hair seem a lot more natural. That's what I mean when I say that consoles are uh, not holding back. 